Welcome to The Daily, presented by EA Sports FIFA 12. With Greg Lawless, I'm Jason Seguini. It's Friday, September 30th. We have to talk about this game from last night, Greg. It might have been the game of the year had it continued at the pace it went in the first half. And that is DC United at the Philadelphia Union. Philadelphia coming away with a win. Well, it was certainly the best first half of the year, that's for sure. It was 2-2 before the first 30 minutes were done. Sebastian Latou with two goals for the Union, including a beautiful one from a nice pass from Michael, Michael Farfan. But then Dwayne De Rosario, the hottest player in MLS right now, gets DC back into it. And then Andy Nahar equalizes. Eventually, the Union get the win on a little golazo by Michael Farfan, who beats a man and then hits it in the upper 90, although the defense was backing off. Ultimately, this game was about playoff positioning. The Union do a very good job. They get the three points. They move into second place in the Eastern Conference and in a good spot for get getting in the playoffs. DC United, they hurt their chances. They had a very good opportunity here even to get one point, which would have helped them, I think. But they, if they had gotten three, they were in a great place to, to secure a playoff position spot. Yeah, the New York Red Bulls might have actually been the beneficiary yeah. of this result. Uh, we should also mention Dwayne De Rosario went off the field with an injury in mm -hmm. the second half. Ben Olsen, after the game, said, looks like it was just a knock on his knee and that he'll be okay. But uh, another thing on the other side from the union, though, remember this. They have now unbeaten in five. About a month ago, we were saying the Union were stumbling. They didn't look like this team that Peter Novak was going to be happy with. Now Sebastian Latou playing very well, and he, he, Novak was actually asked why it is. You know what his answer was? Uh, he joined the Twitter? Yes. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on. Houston and Chicago, a big game on Saturday. These teams in the mix in the Eastern Conference. Chicago obviously has been making this late surge. Yep. Do they have enough in the tank to get it done? I think they do because, you know, they've brought in so many new players and they, they've just been coalescing. And Pablo Pardo has really shored up the defense in the midfield, I think. Logan Paws has shown himself to be a little bit more of an attacker. The key, though, has been the speed up top. Oduro and Niarco. Every defense is afraid of them when they start coming and start running at them. And with the ability that Marco Papa has to find space for himself, either to then slip through Niarco or Oduro, or, or obviously to go to goal himself, this is a very dangerous fire team right now. All right, remember to watch the subplot here. Dominic Oduro going back to Houston. Remember, he was shipped out earlier this season after missing a sitter. And then since then, you know the story. He's really uh, taken off for the fire. Yeah, but then again, we talked to him just yesterday on Extra Time Radio, and he said he doesn't think that that was why he was shipped out. Maybe he was just being politic by saying that, but you never know how this really goes. All right, you can get Extra Time Radio on iTunes or Buzzsprout. We also had Grant Wall on that show. And you can see the Houston-Chicago game on Telfutura at 4 p.m. Eastern Time on Saturday. Moving on with the Saturday slate, Greg, Colorado and Dallas going at it to Western Conference rivals who are battling for playoff position. Yeah, and hey, by the way, this is a rematch of MLS Cup 2010, right? And we keep forgetting that the Colorado Rapids <laughs> are the reigning champions because they don't necessarily play like that. However, this is a team that I think has the ability to beat Dallas in this one for sure. They sent a reserve squad for the most part down to the midweek Champions League match. Dallas also had to travel for that, and they didn't really send a reserve squad. They sent a lot of their guys. So fatigue might be a factor for FC Dallas in this one. But Colorado, I think also the confidence of getting that victory uh, in CCL was huge for them. They're going to come back and feeling very confident, I think. All right, that game is 9 p.m. Eastern time on the direct kick package. One more game we, got, we should mention from Saturday. The LA Galaxy will be hosting Real Salt Lake. Now, a couple weeks ago, we thought this was going to decide <laughs> yeah. the Supporters' Shield, but after that game uh, in the midweek against Chicago, uh, might not. I mean, if Real Salt Lake gets a win here, it still would make a statement, though. It, it would certainly be a statement for Salt Lake to go to LA and get a victory. I don't see it happening. I think the Galaxy are just too strong. There's the boost of having Javier Morales, but you know what? Salt Lake will be without Kyle Beckerman after that headbutt. So I, I see this game as one that the, the Galaxy will do their usual thing, sit back, counterattack, get a goal or two, and they put it away. All right, that's 10.30 p.m. Eastern time on the direct kick package. We should also mention there's some good games on Sunday, including the Columbus crew hosting D.C. United. Big Eastern Conference battle, and Columbus really needs to get some points here. Yeah, they do. Right now, the crew are in danger of falling out of the playoff race altogether, considering they haven't won in about six games or so. United coming off the loss on Thursday to Philadelphia. I think they're going to feel like they played pretty well. They probably deserved a point against the Union the way that they played. Their attack has really come to life in the last couple of weeks, and they're going up against a crew defense that looks very shaky. I think the D.C. actually goes after them early, maybe gets a goal. I think the United, uh, the United has a very good chance of three points in this one. 
All right, I'm headed out west for a big game on Sunday to open BC Place. The Portland Timbers coming to town. You know it's always a big deal when Portland, Vancouver go at it. The expansion rivals and Vancouver with a chance here to knock Portland out of the playoffs. So it is a big one. Yeah, and that's exactly what they said, actually. Vancouver saying they want to spoil the Timbers' season. So uh, nice neighbors there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Last game on Sunday is Chivas USA hosting the Philadelphia Union. Two teams battling for playoff position. I feel like we say that almost with every game. We have to because, I mean, there are so many teams that still have a shot. The Union, they're going to be a little tired because they play Thursday and then Sunday. Short rest, plus they have to travel across the country. However, they're coming off the 3-2 victory, and Latou is one of the best players in the league right now in the in his performances. If he gets a couple of goals, I think that Chivas uh, you know, is not going to be able to match that. You can head to the site for the full slate of games and also check out some of the videos in the lead up to Super Tuesday. And more than that, there's also starting on Saturday, we're counting down the top 50 MLS Cup moments as we will be 50 days from MLS Cup 2011 in Los Angeles. All right, plenty to talk about. That's all we have for the Daily today. Enjoy the weekend of action. We'll be back on Monday.